Good afternoon and welcome. This is the Year of Open uh, discussion about open policy. We have a number of speakers with us today that are going to be contributing their perspective to this uh, lively topic. Uh, and first I want to introduce Amanda Coolidge, who is the moderator and host um, and also put together this wonderful discussion that we're, we'll be having today. This uh, discussion will be recorded and will be posted on the Year of Open website at its conclusion. So Amanda, now it's to you. Great, thank you so much, Susan, and thanks to the Open Education Consortium for hosting this. Um, so I have some really fabulous people joining me today. Um, we have Cable Green, Isha, Bobby Wardena, Christina Peters, and Igor Lesko. Um, and all of these individuals have had experience with open education policy and really are um, working towards making open policy in open education uh, more effective and also um, getting more, bringing more attention to it in terms of what needs to be done to further open education. So what we're going to do is, is each person sort of has a couple of few slides of slides, I should say, um, giving some background into what they've done with work towards open policy, um, and in particular how meaningful it's been um, to the work that they're doing. And then we'll reserve some time for questions. And you can also add any questions you have in the chat. Um, below. I'm sure um, all of our speakers would be willing to participate in that and um, make sure that we can reply. Next we're going to have Ishan from the Commonwealth of Learning um, give us a bit of background in terms of what's happening globally. Hi all. Um, thank you uh, first to OEC and to BC Campus for having the Commonwealth of Learning here. Um, I just wanted to give a uh, brief overview of the policy work uh, we are doing. The Commonwealth of Learning is based here in uh, Burnaby in Canada and we work with 52 member states uh, across the globe uh, within the Commonwealth. So here um, I want to look at first the institutional level policy development as well as uh, national policy development. Um, Further to what Amanda said and you know the policy template that they have, we too have developed a uh, simple to use uh, policy template uh, in the Commonwealth of Learning. As you can see over here, um, it's a Word document which you can download um, and it has certain sections which you can edit and modify uh, based on your requirements. Um, the template is available in English, uh, French, Spanish and Tamil. The Spanish version was uh, translated by a, um, a follower of the Commonwealth of Learning, so we appreciate that, uh, based in Chile. Um, the sections include uh, most of the sections which are available in the uh, BC Campus uh, policy uh, document and the Lumen Learning policy document as well. However, these are you know, all editable depending on your circumstances and circumstances of these uh, institutions. What we have found is certain institutions as well as certain countries within the Commonwealth face a completely different set of challenges than what is used to in uh, North America perhaps. Um, so um, we tested this uh, policy document out last year. Um, we used it in 40 uh, TVET institutions in Kenya and uh, developed uh, 40 policies there. Um, I just have received a finalized policy, approved policy from uh, Shambarewe Technical Training Institute in, Ka uh, in Kenya just now. So um, they have taken the draft policies and they are in the process of implementing. We have gotten around 10 already implemented in Kenya. Um, apart from that, we went to uh, India and worked with the open universities over there. We worked with around 10 open universities and developed uh, OER policies uh, using this template. And the, um, our uh, regional office, SEMCA, in, uh, in New Delhi, India, is following up to finalize those. The interesting thing about this template is, is not just for uh, TVET vocational uh, higher education, it's also for non-formal education. We um, use this template to develop three policies for uh, farming community organizations uh, in India early this year. 
um, and those three policies are being finalized and I'm, I'm told I'll be getting the final versions uh, by the um, end of this month. So as you can see, it's a pretty flexible, versatile uh, policy which you can readily download um, and implement. Uh, next slide, Amanda. Um, the next uh, the next section I want to talk about is the uh, national policy development. Call is involved in uh, OER policy development at the national level. However, you know, as you know, all of you understand, when it comes to the national level, it takes a lot of time. There is a lot of bureaucracy and politics involved in terms of developing uh, these OER policies. Also, we found out that when you develop national policies, when you have <laughs> consultations uh, for developing these policies only a certain amount of top level stakeholders are involved maybe 20 maybe 25 people however if you take a country like uh, uh, India or you know Cameroon and Botswana for this uh, for uh, for the for that matter you know there are a large number of policymakers at the regional and provincial level who are responsible for implementing uh, these policies and even if you create the policy at the government level and if it's pushed to the regions and the provinces what we saw was that there is a, a lack of buy-in um, and ownership among these policymakers at the regional level to push it to their schools or to their uh, respective jurisdictions. So um, I approached it in a different way um, I, which I call the bottom-up approach um, where I, I developed regional and provincial policies which kind of promoted a national policy in three countries, Cameroon, Sri Lanka and Botswana. So in Sri Lanka uh, there are nine provinces, in Cameroon there are ten regions and Botswana there are ten regions. So um, we had this uh, large project of around six months where we employed consultants in these countries who went to the ministries and worked with the ministry to go to all the regions and provinces um, in these countries and uh, develop uh, OER policies for that particular region or that particular province. Now the interesting thing in, in this type of uh, policy development is that all the stakeholders at the regional level were sensitized uh, during these meetings. So they got to know what OER was, they got to know how OER would make an impact in their schools, they got to know how um, how to supplement or how to solve some of the problems they are having uh, with respect to textbooks and things like that. Um, and also they, they had an increased amount of ownership when it came to the when it came to developing the o, uh, OER policies, because they had their own inputs from their particular regions. Uh, to give you an example, um, from my country, Sri Lanka, there are um, two specific regions. You know, the north and the south. Uh, in in the north, uh, you have uh, Tamil uh, speaking uh, schools whereas in the south you have Sinhalese speaking schools. And apart from that, the, uh, the country was uh, uh, in a conflict, a civil conflict for 30 years. And because of that, there are certain cultural differences between the two regions as well. So when we went to the nine provinces, there were different inputs put into the uh, policy templates or the policy documents which reflected the situation in those countries. Same with Cameroon. Uh, apart from the uh, the political and you know civil unrest, uh, they have uh, French speaking and English speaking. So because the regions were allowed to create their own uh, policies, uh, they managed to or they uh, they provided more input into the policies, which make made them uh, more responsive to their particular jurisdiction. So in a in a span of around six months, we managed to develop 29 policies. Uh, in three countries, 29 regions, and in the process, sensitized 608 policymakers, with a cascading effect. You know who went down to uh, you know school levels to train teachers and so on. Um, so, I, I, I we found it to be a very interesting mode of developing OER policies, and also because now all of these regions and provinces have policies, the central ministry is kind of encouraged to have a, a national OER policy, overarching OER policy, which, which governs all of these um, you know, distributed policies. So that work is going on. We held a uh, national workshop to implement these policies in Sri Lanka in January, uh, which was uh, very well received by the ministry and the minister. And uh, hopefully, uh, in due course, we will have the same in Cameroon and Botswana as well. Next slide, please, Amanda. 
So this is the final slide um, to start off the uh, the policy development in each of these provinces and regions. We had uh, uh, templates uh, developed um, uh, specific to the uh, the countries and the regions like um, Africa and Asia, and these are all available as OER under CC BY license on the call repository Oasis for anyone to make use of. So uh, thank you very much.